everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Teal Studio. And today I'm sharing with you days uh, six, seven, and eight of the uh, hashtag falling in love with jelly printing or hashtag 31 days of jelly printing uh, challenge on Instagram. Um, the first prompt for day six that I'm showing, there's going to be 10 of these videos, people. So I hope you love gel printing in the month of March. <laughs> uh, the first one where the prompt was flowers and I wanted to try some different techniques for making flowers. And so I had these plastic freeform cut masks that I had used I cut out for something else. And I decided to try them out using Liquitex paints, Liquitex basics paints on my 12 by 12 gel plate. And what I'm doing is I started out with yellow and then I pulled it off and then I, well, I started out with yellow and I put down the little centers of the flowers to mask that yellow. Then I pulled it off. I put on some pink, some orange and some lavender, put masks on there, pulled the excess paint off. Then I did green at the bottom, put the masks on there and then pulled the green. And then I'm just adding some other colors in the background and removing all the masks. So I wanted a few little extra green bits at the bottom and I wanted some other flower shapes to be showing up in the background. And I'm letting all this dry on the plate, all these layers, thinking about what's going to show in the front and what's going to show in the back. That's the trickiest thing of doing something like this. And you'll see me doing it later in um, the techniques at the end. Thinking about what goes on the plate first is the tricky part. So then when I pull this, I end up getting a lot of the crusty bits off the plate as well. <laughs> and so it's not quite as perfect as I had hoped, but it's a really cool print. Uh, very, very flowery. I just wish that that uh, dark blue and dark uh, orangey rusty color wasn't on there. But other than that, it would be cool. That was just stuff that was left on the plate from not cleaning it. And since I use such light colors, it really shows up a lot. So when I use this, I'll probably trim the uh, excess purple side off and just use the, um, the orange and pink flowers. So then I decided to try making some backgrounds and printing over the top of them. And so uh, I wanted to show that you can use a six by six stencil even though you're making a bigger print. And so I'm just laying down this leaf print and then going through <coughs> and pulling off some of the green. And then I touched up a little bit where there was some straight lines. I don't like straight lines. But as you can see, it worked fine. It um, made an overall background by using the, the mask type stencil to continue pulling off over and over and over. So now I have some backgrounds, so I'm going to put something over them. And of course, the prompt is still flowers. So I'm using this homemade uh, stencil that a friend gave me that she had hand cut herself and putting some flowers over my background, which then makes kind of a field of flowers type of effect. Nothing specific, no stems in specific places, but just an overall feeling of flowers in a field type thing. And then I pull a second print by using some titanium white paint to just pull up all the excess paint left over, which turns out to be a really pretty background, a very subtle flowered background that will be really useful for something as a starting point. And that's on deli paper. So then I decide I'm going to use another homemade stencil that I made a long time ago. And the thing, this stencil has been cut out of, um, and it's also this one, both of these have been cut out using a hot knife uh, on the type of plastic that is for dividers in a binder. And I don't ever clean them. And so they end up with all these bits of paint left on them. And I think it's a really cool effect. And so I just let it pull off onto the plate because the plate and the plastic attract each other and that paint pulls off of that plastic really easy. It's just different than a store-bought stencil. And so 
I used some matte gel medium over that rather than some white to pull a, pull off all that interesting color and shape and pattern. I didn't put enough on and I had to go back in and put some more underneath to grab some of that excess stuff. Uh, matte gel medium uh, is just an acrylic paint without pigment basically is what it is. So it's clear and it helps to pull up all those layers. And that just looks to me like a flower garden, a riot of color. Has the green in the background and then it's got some flowers in the foreground. Decide to do it again using different colors and um, it's still pulling off some of that leftover from a long time ago orange paint. So it's just cool. I, I think it's cool. <laughs> That's the reverse print by flipping over the, um, the stencil and pulling off the paint that I put on there. So I put some light yellow green and some regular yellow Naples yellow over it and pull up the print. And I think this one is over another one of the backgrounds that I made with the little leaf stencil. I think we'll see when it comes up. <laughs> it's hard for me to remember all this stuff. I've been doing a lot of gel printing and I'm going to have a lot of prints, a lot. I'm planning on making a gel print journal out of some of them. And then the rest I'll use for collage and things. So that was probably one of my favorites right there. Uh, really cool, really cool, cool prints. So that was the day flowers. Of course, I'm making a tag book, so I, I printed one on a tag as well to remember all the prompts. I'll put that, those tags on a ring and then I'll be able to remember the entire challenge and what all the prompts were through the whole month. So day seven, I think it is, is threads. And I have some different types of threads I've never actually done this technique before and it became really fun. I enjoyed it. Um, basically, you put the threads on the plate and it makes patterns. So I had different thicknesses. There's some embroidery thread. There's some uh, twine that you tie packages with there. The first print left white strings all over the print with bright color. And then the second print is actually the one I really like and I use titanium white to pull it up and it's outlines in orange and yellow of those strings so pretty cool right isn't that cool <laughs> subtle but really neat so I was at that point thinking oh this is going to be fun so I had some different strings I had uh, some regular thread like sewing thread I had this twine string. I had some eyelash yarn. Um, this tag was one that I had used and it had some paint already on it uh, that was a dark color. So when I put the lighter color over the dark color because titanium white it mixed with a little bit of blue is opaque, it showed the strings as being dark instead of the color of the tag itself which is what would have happened had there not been paint already on that tag. So then I decide to try some metallic um, paints. This is gold and uh, copper PBO paint. And this is, uh, this, I started out with the regular thread, just, you know, the type you sew with. And then there's the embroidery thread and the string that you tie with packages, twine or whatever it's called. And I go to pull it and it doesn't show up very much on the white at all because that paint, that metallic paint is very, very translucent. So it kind of shows up, but not, that was not the effect I wanted. So I decided what I needed was some dark paint. So I let that dry and then I put this dark brown coffee bean color paint over the top to pull it up thinking that I would have a very bright metallic over a dark background. But once again, forgetting that the, the metallic paint is translucent. So not a complete fail, but not what I was looking for exactly. <laughs> that sometimes happens. Um, 
And I end up putting a couple more, trying to put a couple more layers on it, which in the end, it's pretty muddled. I tried to put some bright pops of color on it and oh, I just said that word and um, <laughs> it didn't work out as much as I had planned, but you'll see it in the picture in the end. So this is the eyelash yarn that I had. I had just a couple scraps of it and I thought it would make an interesting effect. So I try some blue over the top of that other piece. And that's pretty cool because you can see some of the white in the background, some of the copper in the background. This isn't the one that has the brown on it, I don't think. I don't know. Anyway, that was an interesting print, interesting background. Very random because you, you can't really plan how it's going to look in your head very much. Kind of, sort of. I mean, I guess you could make patterns. Yeah, there's that other dark print. So I'm not sure what happened with the blue one. I must have put it over something that had the metallic on it that I had pulled. I don't know. Huh. That turned out cool. That was over the one that had the uh, orange strings on it that I originally had. I was going to keep that one, but I ended up not keeping that one. So then I decided I better make a tag, another tag to put in my tag book uh, using this real fine thread that you would sew your clothing with. Boy, did that one turn out cool. It's really cool. The thread stuck to it. <laughs> but I don't know. It looks, I'm not sure what, what it reminds me of, but it reminded me of something organic. And I take the ghost print on the other side that already had some printing on it. And that side's really cool too. So I liked that tag the best of the tags that I made. So that, I must, there must be one more. I was thinking that was done, but there must be one more. <laughs> I don't remember at this point. Oh yeah, I was thinking of making designs, um, there's a technique where you could put wet paint and then you put thread in it and then you pull it off underneath and it makes designs, it makes a different type of design. So I was trying that on this piece um, by putting the paint down, laying the thread on top and then putting the paper and then pulling the end of the thread out and it makes kind of these, uh, I don't know, almost like lightning strike type look, sort of. I think it worked better with the thicker string, but I did it again with a lighter color over the top. A light opaque color over the top. So that one's pretty neat too. I can see that one as a background starter for something. It didn't yank as much as I had hoped, but anyway, that was day seven threads. A lot of fun. So day eight was silhouette and in it, in preparation, I cut some things out using an X-Acto knife. Um, in the case of the bunnies, I used a uh, pair of scissors and I'm trying out some different ways of making silhouettes. So I start out with this word, uh, realizing that it needs to be backwards on the plate so that when you pull it, it becomes forward. And I put that on, in magenta and then I'm just making like a background for it thinking that I'm going to have it in a background scene. So I'm thinking about what comes in front of what, what goes in front of what and not exactly doing it the way I did the flowers where I layered the masks on top of each other. I thought I could do it in separate sections and make the background here and then put the, the for, foreground silhouettes on the top. Wished I would have just left it like that because I ended up messing it up, as you'll see. <laughs> so then I take the other part of the stencil slash mask that I cut, which is a girl and a guy standing next to each other. And the idea of this was to put it on the front part in front of the love, and then they would stand out. But 
my black paint is not functioning. It's so gloppy and goopy and just yucky that it did not make a clean print. So I ended up being unhappy. So I thought, well, maybe I'll try it again. I'll, I'll try it again with a, a better paint. So I get out the dioxazine purple to try it again. And that would all be great, except for there's not really any way for me to line it up because I don't have a registration mark. I can't really line this up. So I just kind of plop it on there and it's not straight. Um, but what did, what interesting did, thing did come from that is that I made this tag, which turned out really cool with the ghost print. By pulling that up with some titanium white, I made a interesting silhouette of almost ghostly looking figures on the tag. So I was really happy with that. <laughs> but the other thing, not so much. So then I think, okay, well, I can do it in the opposite. I can put the mask on, on instead of the stencil. Because the thing that has the opening in the middle is called a stencil, but the parts that come out of it are called a mask. And so I use a dark color and put the masks down, go over them real good, and then pull the masks. And then I have white figures on a dark background, another type of silhouette. But I'm not just going to leave it like that because that's boring. I want some color. So I use uh, the pink and orange, and I remove some of the paint using the flower stencil like you saw me do earlier, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's all running together. But then I make the mistake of using yellow, and yellow and purple make brown, which I wasn't thinking about at the time. So it's cool looking, but the purple got really muted by putting the um, its kryptonite color on there, which is yellow or orange. This one, however, turned out really cool. You can see the silhouettes, but they have the flowers over the top, which is interesting. So then this uh, stencil and mask is some bunnies cut out of inkjet paper, regular paper, you know, just printer paper from my inkjet printer. And I put that down and then I put a piece of corrugated paper over the top to make a pattern and then I put a lighter color. So now I've got two bunnies on the plate that are kind of teal and green, which I think is really cool. And then I'm using the excess paint on my application plate, which is the six by six to make that tag, just to use it up. Then I go over this with yellow and make some of those same flowers again. <laughs> Because at this point, I have this background that, that you don't see, you haven't seen yet, that has the, um, there, there it was right there, real quick. I was using it to pull up the paint from the other print, and it has the flowers and circles on it. So I thought that it would make a good background for my bunnies and make a real spring-like print. So there you have it, my spring-like print with oranges and pinks and uh, yellow green and then the turquoise bunnies for March because March hair. Yeah. And I like bunnies, even though they do eat my plants in the backyard, which, yeah, I have a whole thing with the snarky bunnies in the backyard. But <laughs> anyway, on to the next one. This was one that I cut out out of a piece of cardstock with a... Exacto knife. Uh, MLS, the Major League Soccer, started yesterday. And so we all watch it here at the house, have a bunch of soccer fans. So I made a soccer guy and I was making another layered print, um, starting with the stencil and putting on uh, that's Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue together with a fluid paint. Then I mixed some light blue and some green make the sky and the grass on my print. And I'd made the ball and it was really thick. So the ball didn't turn out exactly like I wanted. It doesn't really look like a soccer ball. So then I decided that that's pretty boring and it needs some more color. It needs some more pattern. It needs some more interest. So I put some more paint on the plate, avoiding that central area where I know that the soccer player is. 
um, filling in the background with some pattern and some darker colors using a couple different stencils and that improves it I think it looks it looks more interesting another layer on top and then I decide to fix the ball making it have bigger marks on it and filling back in the, the white so that is my final print I hope you've enjoyed this if you have please leave me a thumbs up a comment subscribe all those things and of course there's always time to join into this this challenge if you want to that's it for me. Bye-bye.